What's up, Samonix? Welcome back to a new quick win. And today we're talking about the share API that we can use within our Ionic app and especially with Capacitor. So um, Capacitor has a core plugin for the share API, which works kind of nice on a device, but it's a bit difficult uh, in the regular browser because on the web, it's using the web uh, share API, which isn't available everywhere. So we will look at three different scenarios today to make a regular share, to share an image that we just captured, and also to share a local file using a little plugin. So let's do this. So far, I've created a blank new Ionic application with Angular and Capacitor, and I also installed the uh, progressive web app element since then we're able to test things on a browser as well, although I'm not sure if the thing will actually work. Anyway, good idea if you're planning to use the camera and want to give it a test. We will take a look at this later. For now, um, let's also add the HTTP client module to the app module since um, we will need this for our third option to share a local file. Once you're done with that, uh, you can also add to your main TS the following two lines, which are uh, loading the uh, progressive web app elements that we just installed. And once we're done with this, we can actually go to our homepage and add three simple buttons. So that's actually uh, all the HTML we are going to write today. Just three simple buttons and three functions that we now are going to fill out. Let's start with the most basic example because that's actually um, super boring. It is the basic form of using the share plugin. You can pass to this plugin a title, a text and a URL. So you could now run this uh, with Ionic Surf. I will directly use the live reload so uh, we can also see it on my device. And also let's quickly talk about browser support. As I said, the Capacitor Share uh, API on the web uses the Web Share API. The problem is this uh, chart is pretty red and the only green boxes you see are Safari, iOS Safari and Chrome for Android latest version. Well, that is not really uh, uh, something we can work with. So um, I will just show you how it would actually look like within Safari. And actually, to be honest, um, I don't think it's the best way of sharing something on the web. Uh, so this is Safari. Let's try the basic share. And it looks like this. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I just, no, I don't really like this at all. Um, you see, it kind of works. It brings up my mail. It usually inputs also the values. Perhaps my mail is a bit slow. Yeah, check out the Ionic Academy. So uh, that was definitely added. And once we take a look at this on a device, it looks actually a lot better. So on a real device, we can tap the basic share and we get this um, share dialog right here. Let's try to open a mail and we see the subject learn Ionic fast and my text was added right to the mail. Now that is, I think, for a mobile version of your application, a nice way to show a share dialog. Again, Safari um, doesn't really look that good. Um, within Chrome, it's not even working at all. So uh, really limited support for the share API. The share API also has a version two, um, which is um, not really supported anywhere besides latest versions of Chrome, which enables you to use a file array. but since we uh, want to make this as cross-platform as possible, uh, usually with Ionic, uh, we can't stick to that solution as well. But a simple way to, for example, share an image is actually to uh, first of all copy it and then using the URI, so um, not any base64 string or anything like this, but the URI type and then calling the share plugin and using it for the URL. Now, one uh, problem with this approach again, this approach will actually not work within a browser again. So for browsers, you really need to come up with a different solution for share. Um, it's actually kind of complicated. I didn't expect this topic to be that complicated. Uh, and if you have specific requirements, um, we will talk about that in the end again. So this is really just a general share. Anyway, 
If you want to share photos quite easily, let's take a look. Where's my device? There we go. Let's try the share image. I can capture an image. So nice imageception again. I use this and then it should automatically restart my application. Um, well, that was actually not my idea. <laughs> Let's try it again. Okay, there we go. Now we see the photo in here and I can once again open the mail and it would be right inside my mail. So that works actually kind of nice. Um, I'm fine with that share dialog. So number one, super easy share. Number two, a bit more complicated because we have to get the image first. Um, it might also work if you are loading a local image file in here and path uh, pass the path right in here. Uh, I just did it with the camera since this already returns the right type that the plugin expects. So you can't put in base64 data. Um, it might work if you're loading a file from the file system, but it could be tricky in general. Now, the third option is to share a local file. For that case, I added a simple test PDF file into the assets folder of my application. You can just use whatever you want. And then we will make use of a plugin. Actually, can we uh, look at the GitHub repository? I think that's it. There we go. Capacitor File Sharer. Uh, not too many stars, but it's actually kind of updated uh, already for Capacitor 2.0, so that's nice. You can go ahead and install it like this or just check it out on the GitHub repository, uh, Byte Old's Capacitor File Sharer. Uh, in order to make this work, we need to take uh, a little extra step. So for reasons I'm not sure about, um, we need to register this plugin for the web. And therefore, we need two imports right here, which are not completely, oh, actually they are shown, <laughs> so nice. Uh, we need these two imports in our app component, and then we can call register web plugin with a file sharer. This might change in the future because I haven't seen this with other plugins. I'm not sure if it's the standard for capacitor web plugins, but I don't think so. But anyway, to make it work, we need this approach. Once we got it in there, uh, we can actually use it within our files. So let's go back and now we can actually also close this and make a simple request to our file. And that's why we install the HTTP plugin uh, in the first place. Because using the HTTP plugin from Angular, we can get a local file as a blob. And what we now need is actually base64 string. So perhaps you already have one. Um, perhaps this would also work with the camera approach, which could also return base64. But if you want to use a local file, this approach would work great for you as well. So you would get back a result, which is a blob. And then I will um well let's try to do this without making any typos so we can create a new file reader which will read our file um, so there will be dragons within reader on load end uh, actually it looks a bit different like this and then in the end you call reader read as data url the result that we got back from the HTTP client. So all of this is really just to load the local file and to convert it to a base64 string. That's really uh, the whole idea of this approach. And once you're in here, we got the blob data. Uh, no, we got the base64 data, but we also need to uh, split the string since it starts with like application, blah, 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 slash anything. And therefore we need to split the result. And to do this, we first of all grab the result and say a string because TypeScript would otherwise complain a bit about our implementation of this. So to get the data, we can now say result split, add the comma and, and take the first item of the array. So again, it looks like application PDF, blah, 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 blah. And then at some point the real data starts. So we're splitting it and we're taking the part that follows. That's the idea. 
And now we can get back to the plugin that we just installed. So that's the file sharer. I'm actually not sure uh, why it looks like this again. Normally you extract it, so that could actually work. File sharer. Um, makes life a bit easier. And do we get typings? No, okay. No typing today for me. Well, well, well. Anyway, um, to this plugin, we pass the file name. Let's just call this test PDF. The uh, data we just created here because um, the short form of writing this is just having it once in there. And the content type in our case will be application PDF. And that's enough to share our file. We could also add a then blog and a catch blog um, if you encounter any errors, that is of course recommended to do. But let's see, um, again, I'm pretty sure this is not working in the browser or I think it's kind of working but it just downloads the file. Um, that's not really the idea of this plugin uh, or of sharing uh, anyway. But capacitor file, well, it's to download and share files. Yeah, I'm not sure why it downloads the file, but... Okay, also quick addition for Android since for iOS, uh, we can use the plugin we installed without anything else. But for Android, we have to go to Android, App, Source, Main, Main Activity or find it somewhere else and import our plugin. That's basically always the case uh, for any other Capacitor plugin. So you add the import for the plugin and then you go ahead and add a little snippet with add in here. Uh, actually, I think uh, the original plugin states that you should use something like um, additional plugins add. That's not really true. Um, for all capacitor plugins, it just looks like this and it works uh, also like this. They also have this override block. I'm not sure if it helps uh, our applications or not, but I didn't uh, see any problem in adding it. So simply add this block as well to your main activity, save it and make sure you sync all your capacitor stuff to the native projects uh, after installing the plugin. So you can also use it on Android. Cool addition. Anyway, the interesting part happens within our application. So let's press the third button, share file. And then we see the document that is in my assets is now attached to this. And I could also, of course, uh, delete this and use, can I use something like Twitter or so? Um, um, well, apparently not. Anyway, um, why do I can't share? Perhaps it's a PDF that we can't share to Twitter. Can I share my image to Twitter or anything like, like Facebook or Instagram? Okay, I can at least share my image to Twitter. So it's just about the plugin and um, I guess I just destroyed everything in here. Or perhaps I have just tweeted this image. Could be possible, but it's also a quite big image. Okay, Instagram share works. There we see the preview once again. So once again, three options for sharing. The simple option using the capacitor share. The um, Second option using capacitor share with a file pass to an image or anything like this. Or the third option with the additional plugin to share a local file or PDF, CSV, anything like this within your application. Once again, everything is kind of limited on the browser. So the browser support for all of this isn't really great. I don't know when the web API, the share API is available everywhere. Nobody knows. And also uh, we still need to wait for version two to be included um, until we can really pass files to the API. Then it would be really like perfect everywhere. Um, but so far, this is what we can use. If you now want to use something like share directly to WhatsApp, share directly to Twitter with a button, in that case, I think you have to fall back to the old Cordova plugins that we use. It's no problem to use Cordova plugins with Capacitor, so simply install it with NPM um, and the Ionic native wrapper and use it like usual. But of course, you know, you can't use those Cordova plugins inside your uh, web version of Capacitor, of the Capacitor app then. 
but it's a legit alternative if you want to have a direct share to any other social platform. If you just need this basic share, go with Capacitor and you'll be fine. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your app faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material, and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding, Simon.